TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from um, Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it, little warning screen. Just in case. Uh, and twitch.com is where you can watch a live, previous lives, or, or be ready for the next live. Usernames at the bottom of the screen, man. Also, Patreon. Got one of those as well. We post five days per week. Uh, but this is Police Interceptors. This is from season 14, I believe. Let's get into it. Or talk to me first. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. If you hear a little sound, that's the that's the foot massager. Speed is 80 miles an hour through the 30s. Stand by. When it comes to pursuits, interceptors know that safety has to come first. Vehicle has gone offside carriageway, offside carriageway. I'm not following. Blue lights off. Blue lights off. Because they know that fleeing drivers have just one thing on their minds. Get away. They're not going to slow down, they're going to run past at 70, 80 miles an hour. And the last thing you want is a kid getting wiped out by a car that's got no regard for anybody else's safety. The big out is smoking, I think he's losing power. Crash, crash, crash. <laughs> Interceptor Liam Sue is out on the night shift. He's hoping for some good fortune when it comes to catching villains on this significant date. It's Friday the yeah. My bad, I'm eating a banana. Pause. Team tonight, favourite night shift to do because they're so unlucky for plenty of people. So we're going to work all through the night. I've got Titan and Louie on board. Hopefully we'll get some uh, decent jobs to get stuck in Dog handler Liam's favourite part of the job is bagging burglars and being involved in pursuits. And tonight it seems that Lady Luck is on his side. A colleague is behind a silver Nissan that has lit up his onboard. That's a good choice of TV show, Luther. A colleague is behind a silver Nissan that has lit up his onboard number plate recognition camera. Got a unit behind a car that's got no insurance, no MOT and is registered off-road. So we believe it's up to no good, they're going to try and put a stop in. And if it makes off, we can assist with their pursuit. The officer suspects that the driver of the Nissan is a serial offender, currently banned from driving, who was involved in this pursuit just over two months ago. He drove at more than 70 miles per hour on residential streets before taking the car off-road onto a playing field. He was nicked for this dangerous driving and shouldn't be behind the wheel. Bro, it's diabolical. He done learned his lesson. You're supposed to frolic freely through fields, not drive through them evading police. You know what I'm saying? Like, chill out, buddy. Liam's colleagues in a marked car. As he follows at a safe distance, it seems the driver has spotted him. He bangs on the blues, but the Nissan boots it. Running a red light, and then straight through another one. The pursuit's now on the open road, and the driver is now hitting over 70 in a 40 zone. Liam's a few streets away and hoping to head off the fleeing motor. Here it is. The Nissan's now heading towards another set of red lights, 
and a car's coming into the junction from the left-hand side. It's a serious high-speed smash. A nice little T-bone right there. That's a Nissan? What kind of Nissan is that? That looks like a, a popcorn box. Like, what? The officer behind quickly apprehends the driver. Liam is just a few hundred yards away and is the next on scene. Got him. Yeah, well, yeah. We got him caught. Now his priority is to find out if the other people involved in the crash are okay. Stay with your car, darling. Stay with your car. And update control. Yeah, fight now, don't I'm with him. Elderly but, woman? Um, it's crashed into a white Audi. The front seat passengers looks like she's in some distress of the actual vehicle that was filmed to stop. And the uh, driver of the Audi. That's crazy. The Audi is towed up. Hit a pole, hit a gate, hit a car, everything. Also looks like she's in a bit of distress. The driver of the car, which was hit, is shaken, but otherwise seems okay. Lima's main concern is now the passenger in the Nissan. Are you injured, sweetie? <laughs> Your chest? Yeah, my passengers complained of uh, chest pain, conscious and breathing. I bet that airbag don't play. That airbag undefeated. That airbag Floyd Mayweather. Point nine, I'm going to have to remove the passenger from the vehicle. It's smoking. With the engine smoking and potentially ready to blow, Liam needs to remove the woman from the car immediately. I'm going to have to get it out, darling. But the door is wedged shut and they can't budge it. Ideally, they'd leave her in the car until the paramedics arrive. But with the engine smoking, Liam can't take any chances. Just in case, darling, you shift your cross as careful as you can. Good lass. Thankfully, they get her out safely. And while the fire service deal with the smoking engine, Liam can help his colleague with the arrested driver. No insurance. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, why even put your girl in a situation like that? Or... She ain't want to be around that. She ain't want to get her chest beat up today. We're going to need you to stop. This is what happens when you don't stop. He's saying he doesn't have any driving license or documents. And he's smashed some old woman into the street furniture. You know, his missus in the passion seat complaining of chest pain. We got out of the car because there's a bit of smoke. Better safe than sorry. Doesn't look like there's anyone seriously injured. It was a stroke of luck on Friday the 13th, but the driver hasn't seriously harmed himself or anyone else. We've literally just left him like that. Um, I think he's been removed from the car and that's it. He's complaining of some back pain. Liam doesn't have much sympathy for this reckless and dangerous driver. He's passed his breath test, but he is a disqualified driver, so he's going to have no documents for the car, no insurance, and that's why he's made off tonight. Just absolute bottom feeders, you know, putting other people at risk. There's a lady there and a lovely Audi. She's in distress. His girlfriend's in distress. Audi is nice, too. And obviously he's in a bit of discomfort complaining about his back, so hopefully he'll get a bit of jail time. That's what he deserves. That's where he needs to be. The driver was later convicted of dangerous driving, driving while disqualified and without insurance. He got 18 months. Probably suspended. Nah, not suspended. He was sent to prison for 17 months, banned from driving for 44 months and ordered to pay a victim surcharge of £140. Listen, I watch this too often. You know what I'm saying? I was one month off. I'm good. All three people involved in the crash later made a full recovery from their injuries. For the earlier incident, he was given an additional four-month jail term suspended for two years and an 18-month driving ban. He's made off from police. He's a disqualified driver. He's got no insurance. Caused all that destruction. Caused the lady of the Audi a lot of distress and shock, and he's ruined her car, probably wrote it off. He's wrote his own car off, and he's put his girlfriend. This is definitely, well, no, definitely two totaled vehicles. In hospital, and himself, just because he didn't want to stop and because he chose to drive. So I always think, you know, they've got a ch choice. It's up to them to make the right decisions and just pull over. Still to come. Do the red lights. Speed. Don't yourself. 
hours a day. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the interceptors are ready for anything. Things seldom pan out the way you expect them to. You want to go to a job, you want it to be nice and neat, and dead straightforward and simple, but that seldom happens. Not sure what's going on, but I've got one of the kids kicking off with us. Experience has taught them that even the simplest seeming incident is being good as gold, yeah. and can suddenly become complicated. In that bag. What? And dangerous. We've got what I can only describe as an improvised explosive device and the one thing we're expecting. Really like fireworks. This job is the unexpected. It's early afternoon and interceptor Jimmy Greaves is following up a tip-off about a dodgy driver and suspected drug user. We're just heading to Hartlepool to act on a bit of intelligence that the police have received in relation to a motor vehicle that's been driven around with no insurance, but more importantly, the driver is believed to be dropping off drugs at one of the local gyms. Ten-year veteran Jimmy is a big fan of heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua and knows that he might have to bide his time before making the knockout blow. Yeah, I just plotted up now. We're waiting for this vehicle. The intelligence would suggest that he comes at specific times. There's only one way in and one way out, so we're hoping that he comes. Who, who tripped on him? What intelligence y'all got? Y'all busted somebody and was like, listen, give us the supplier. That's the only way we're here you're going to get out of this. It's passed, and then we can quickly get out and intercept him. 40 minutes later, Jimmy's patience pays off. As the suspect car, a dark blue Fiesta, drives past. This is a vehicle where the intelligence is linked to. So. Jimmy blocks the exit route in case the driver tries to make off. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Just want to turn your engine off a sec. Is this your car, is it? Yeah, is it insured yeah. to you? Well, I've just uh, bought it. You've just bought it? Ah, right, OK. Yeah. Have you managed to get it insured oh. yet? Well, no. All right, OK. No problem. He look like he on Class A's right now. Boy, he's a terrible liar also. Just want to give us a couple of seconds. We'll get some details off you then, all right. The driver is the man Jimmy was after. I've got a vehicle stopped. Is there a unit fee that can come and assist me, please? He'll check out the possible driving charges first before searching the man who he suspects may have drugs on him. Have you got a full licence of you? Well, you've, no. got, you've not got a licence either. Oh, it's getting better, isn't it? Oh, wait, so is he... What is he trapping? Is he trapping Class A or is he trapping metabolic steroids? Uh, Honesty seems to be this man's policy. But that's not going to stop his car being seized. In the front of my vehicle so I can take you through the paperwork and stuff that we need to go through. You can come back and get anything you need out of here in a minute. The first part of the tip-off has proven true. The man is driving illegally. And now Interceptor Lee Wilson has I arrived. Remember it. Jimmy can investigate the second part, that he is carrying drugs. No I just want to keep an eye on him just while yeah. I, I search him. I'll let him know yeah, that I'm doing no a search. Worries, Jimmy gets sniffer dog Gunner. Lee chats with the suspect, but will he be so honest? All right, if you've got anything on you now, all right, you're better off just being straight up front. If there's anything in the car, the dog will find it. Oh. You've definitely not got anything on you. Because no. the next stage will be to take you in for a strip search. Oh, then take me in. Yeah. We take you in for a strip search. Um, we would find whatever if you've got anything on you. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Right, 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 True to form, the man is telling the truth, and no more drugs are found. But in the time it took Gunner to have a nose through the motor, the driver has failed a drug wipe. 
Obviously. Within minutes of us doing the test, very strong indication that he's openly admitted he's took cocaine in the last 24 hours. Not only has he uh, got Class A controlled drugs on him, um, he's also a drug driver. It's been a very successful job. An unlicensed, uninsured and drugged up driver has been taken off the road. But just as they're about to pack up and head off to the Nick, the man's family turn up and one of them is particularly unhappy. What is there to be mad about? Somebody tricked. Your brother walked right into the trap. And he got it found with it on him. He's red-handed. Like, there's nothing to be, like... There's no injustice going on out here, you know what I'm saying? Then what? Free him, though. But, you know... Hey, lock me down. Listen to him, then. Oh, then. Oh, on. his dad? The man isn't pleased with how he thinks his father's been treated. Yeah. So why are we looking up for coming to the gym? No, I don't go down. Go on your way. Just need to count yourself down, don't you? I'm not really. I want to know what you... What I'll, I'll, I'll always tell you. What it's about. I'm going to tell you. Your dad's been dealt with reasonably. All right, he's been good as gold. All right, and you've come over here being like this. Oh, well, There's no need to be like that. So it might be something I've done. It's right. nothing to do with what you've done, unless you've done something that you haven't told us. Hi, yeah. Uh, gang. Go away. On your bike. Go away. You hey, 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 this is the last morning. No, you're going to get lost. That's his son. They both look like dad, the dad. <laughs> so, I don't want me on camera. I don't care. I don't want him on Move. camera. I don't Move. care. Get in the car. Just go. It's now a new movie. Just go. When did they put ominous music behind the scenes? This is Right, one more. just making the situation worse. Finally, the man yes. appears to have calmed down. 100 making it worse. But shortly after getting into the car. He's gonna get back out? Again. Despite being pepper sprayed and tasered, he continues to resist. Cocaine is a, a, a crazy drug. It make you immune to, to tasers and power spray. So Lee deploys the taser again. Get on your get get on your floor. So now y'all going to jail together, My father and pops. Jail sentence together. Dogs need assistance at this car park immediately, please. Finally, they get the cuffs on him. The first male we arrested, his family's turned up, son's attempted to attack officers. He's been tasered twice He's definitely and sprayed. Class need some units man. here to get rid of them. Just stand by to work at unit, Captain. Please show me. A straightforward arrest has quickly snowballed into something far more dangerous, meaning Lee had to use pepper spray and a taser to restrain the extremely aggressive suspect. Some sort of conversations went on in the car, and then I seen a turn. And... The world's aggressive, bro. You can't be that aggressive when you ain't got no belt or no draws. When you out here commando, your best bet is to keep a low profile. Don't get swung in the 360 motion. Don't get put down on the ground. Don't get your arm bent up behind you. Don't get pepper sprayed. Don't get tasered. That's your best bet when you ain't got no draws on. Bro didn't have no draws on. And I, who, go, who, whatever. The male instantly became aggressive in the car, come out, and it's I took the earliest opportunity to spray him with Parva, which is an incapacitant spray, and it didn't have any effect on him whatsoever. <laughs> The best way to bring that male down to a level where he could dealt with safely was for me to uh, discharge a taser. At which point he went to the ground. He's then become aggressive again, start to resist again, and I realised one of the barbs had come out, so I've discharged the taser a second time, and it was successful. Ultimately, that's brought him down to a level where we can control him. You got double tased? That's crazy.
in a safe manner. Even once secured in the back of the van, the man continues to be aggressive. Hey, you're under arrest for a free, you don't have to say. Free. Can you get to us later, line for anything you do say? Evidence, yeah, as soon as y'all hit him with a drug swipe, <laughs> y'all might, y'all might break the uh the swipe machine with him. Understand? No, 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 police and that nonsense is better caught. We doors. His breath warm, <laughs> hot breath. Uh, back up a little bit. Dickhead. And he's still being aggressive. Uh, head button the cage. These are the type of people I would deal with, boldly. Really. Got duty care to them under the men's public end. Yeah. Ain't no way you head but that glass and don't and don't knock yourself out unless you on class A's. He had a little bit too much. Ourselves and he's uh he's now under arrest. The headbanger's been taken to hospital <laughs> to, <laughs> the to get right. checked out while Jimmy takes his dad back to the Nick. Oh they did take him to the hospital, okay. Put the keys. Let's get out of here then. Back at the station, the original suspect was booked in and locked up. He was convicted of driving under the influence of drugs and driving with no license or insurance. He was ordered to pay 200. That's blurred out, YouTube. Please, it's blurred out. You seen? You couldn't see nothing. It was just the the color of the bag was white and it's black and white screen. That's blurred out. And 35 pounds in fines and costs, and banned from driving for three years. No further action was taken in relation to the white powder. His son was later convicted of a Section 4 public order. He received a 10-day rehabilitation order and was ordered to pay £700 in fines and costs. Thankfully for Jimmy and his colleagues, this explosive incident had a... His son got it worse. That's crazy. A ...successful and safe conclusion. You're in a small town where people have access to phones and before you know it, we've got family members who are very emotional turning up at the scene and it just changed the whole dynamics of that particular incident. And thankfully, we had enough of us to be able to deal with that. We just need to look after ourselves and make sure that we go home safe because that's that's what we want to do. <coughs> uh, we're here to, for a job, but at Did the same time... Did he pee on himself? A little, little water on the ground? Make sure that we go home safe because that's, that's what we want to do. Uh, we're here to, to, for a job, but at the same time, we, we want to go home nice and safe as well. It's a bleak midwinter Stop evening, it. and the sub zero temperatures are making life difficult for interceptor Chris Green. Yeah, I've had a bit of uh, bad weather tonight. There's been an earlier snowstorm, which has left a lot of the side roads quite slippy and, and icy, temperatures below freezing. So it does make it a little bit tricky for us trying to get the jobs in a hurry because obviously we've got to get there in one piece and the added risk of <coughs> us being involved in an accident is quite real. Dog handler Chris has experienced a fair few frozen northeast nights in his 17 years on the job and tonight he'll be on top form behind the wheel. It's a quite a challenging conditions and obviously if you get into a pursuit or anything similar it raises the risks quite significantly. These are four-wheel drive thankfully so it gives us a bit more grip on the road but you still got to be mindful that you're only one patch of ice away from end up on the curb. So, a couple of hours into his shift, Chris gets a call to look out for a stolen Mazda, which was involved in a pursuit before giving his colleagues the slip. Another job over in Stockton. Where he was so casually so walking. Mazda three. It's been sighted by uh, being pursued. So, by the sounds of it, temporary loss at the moment. Yeah. Plotting up. Chris heads to a spot where he thinks the Mazda could be going. And ten minutes later, his hunch pays off. It's Quite Master 3, isn't it? A Mazda has just pulled out in front. Now he needs to double-check it's the same car that made off earlier. As he's in a marked dog van, he doesn't want to get too close and spook the driver into another pursuit. It's an indicator. <laughs> I'll be amazed if it is. And amazingly, checks confirm it is the stolen motor. It is. Get off, get off, get off. The driver <coughs> still seems unaware he has a cop car tailing him. But as Chris follows him down residential streets, the driver then clearly clocks the marked car in his rear view mirror, hits the gas and speeds off on the icy roads. So the snowy north road, head towards the town. Yeah, it's approaching St Mary's roundabout. Not one, not one. Taking the second, ten seconds. Nelson Terrace. Speeds four zero. 
a slow motion police chase. I feel like this police chase is really slow. Thankfully, the traffic is light on this freezing night as the stolen Mazda hammers straight through a red signal. Right, 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 Bishop Lynn. As the fleeing driver's sticking to the main roads, the conditions aren't too bad. It's on Durham Road, speed is 4-0. But then he heads off into a narrow residential street. And that's where you messed up, buddy. I know you're about to spin out. Zoom the whiskey, Victor. And, uh, right, right, it's right, right. Straight. Straight. Well, the road is more like an ice rink. This pursuit is becoming cause for concern. <laughs> Eastbourne Road, it's right, 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 Cherry Gardens. And then the rampage. <laughs> <laughs> Slid right off. Did you run away? Ups the danger level again. Oh no, that was on purpose. Heading off road. The Mazda slips and slides across the snowy grass towards a narrow gateway. Not gonna get through there. Oh, he knew where he was going. He knew exactly where he was going. This is not on accident. This is planned. The compact car sneaks through the gap, taking out a wing mirror in the process. And Chris, in his slightly wider dog van, gingerly follows him through. Oh, he made it. Yeah, we've gone off road. We're through onto. As Chris races to catch up, he speeds past the marked cop car, which has had a close encounter with the Mazda. Yeah, it's stuck on the north one. Chris is soon back on its tail. Speed is 5 0. Nobody left, spun out. Left, left road. <laughs> Through the red lights, left, left, left. Alma Street, I believe it is. Now on a snowy dual carriageway, the car thief boots it to over 60 miles an hour and then tries another risky trick in his attempt to shift Chris. Which one? Vehicle's lights out, speed 6 0. Wrong side of the road, speed is 8 0. The reckless driver will clearly stop at nothing to get away, but the cops are closing in. An unmarked police car coming from the opposite direction joins Chris at the next junction. He soon has the Mazda in his sights and takes the lead. It's breaking left, 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 not an avenue. You don't want to watch a dash cam, though. Speed 05. The runaway driver is back to his old tricks, swapping tarmac for turf in a desperate bid to escape. Going the off road, off the oh, trying to spike his tires. But what he work. doesn't know is that a third car is also lying in wait. Now they have enough vehicles to box in the stolen car. He's slowing down. There's also 80 pounds of snarling German Shepherd ready to run if they decide to leg it. That'd be a worse nightmare running from that dog. Now the master driver once again repeats another trick he made earlier. Through the gate. The driver's gone back through the same gap Chris followed him through, and the pursuing X5 is too big. But the cops are now wise to his tactics. A fourth cop car is waiting the other side of the gap, and is straight on the runaway driver's tail. Yeah, buddy, it's, the jig might be up. They know your route now. Chris takes a different route to try and trap the master, but colleagues up ahead have another plan. Yeah. They're planning to use a stinger, a strip of hollow nails thrown in front of a car to deflate its tires and bring it to a stop. An officer lies in wait and as the Mazda passes, the plan works and it's a direct hit. Yeah, he's not going to be able to continue. Not with these slippery road conditions. As the Mazda turns a corner, the lead car closes in, but the car's been abandoned and someone's making a run for it. They didn't decamp? Yeah, it, Here comes where that dog come in. Oh yeah. We about to see somebody get snarled. Chris and German Shepherd Ronnie are right behind and ready for action. Where, where's the driver gone? Over, over the top of us. On the back. It's time for Ronnie to hunt down the runner. <laughs> In 
drive. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. The suspect has jumped a fence into a pitch black field. Chris's tracker dog, Ronnie, is the best chance they have of finding him. What's the drop on the other side? Oh, it's quite big for the dog over here. With the fence nearly as tall as six foot three Chris and a further drop on the other side, it's too risky to put Ronnie over. So he finds a lower section further up the street. Can I, can I help you, please? Ronnie heads off into the pitch black and immediately picks up a trail. Get out, get out. Which leads him to an industrial area surrounded by a large metal fence. His keenness to get in isn't the only indication that someone's been here. There's also a glove on one of the spikes at the top of the fence. Just for the dog's reaction here, I don't know if someone's actually gone over this fence. I just want to get some cops on this side. 484, can I come in? Do somebody just go around. Bro, I know bro just ain't going to high speed chasing dodge a dog, the five, 15 cat. I mean, I'm talking about 15 cats, 15 cops. To the industrial side where the post office is, please. Just checking that area. We really just took down reaction. on the chase. S someone possibly been across this way, so I'm getting the unit to go around. We can't get over the fence, it's far too high. Buddy, why is your outfit so tight? Getting the unit to go around. We can't get over the fence. Why is bro outfit this tight? How are you running after in this? What are the, what is that, spandex? Leggings? What you, oh my days. Far too high. <laughs> Chris and Ronnie head round to the main entrance of the compound. Our camera operator has been told to... said it isn't tight, it's expandable. Listen, bro knees is glued to the knee part of that pan. Stay know? outside so as not to contaminate the trail. Ronnie's nose has been twitching all the way round. And once he's let loose inside, it doesn't take him long to find someone. Dog's got one. Ah, right, ah. chill your boots. Help. Stop it. Stop. Help. Help. Ah. Ronnie, Help. out, good boy. Ronnie's straight off the suspect once Chris orders him to, but he's certainly made his mark. <laughs> Ronnie, twig, twig again. You're not to the motor vehicle, okay? Ah. Dangerous driving. Keep walking, keep walking. Turn around, turn around. Can you want to please? Turn around, let's face the wall. What are you doing here? Yeah, he's gone over where I said he had the, the glove on the fence. Is his other one? He's still got his left glove on. When we first tracked where the driver went, the dog on the free track came to this corner of the fence. There was a glove on top. His left hand still has the matching glove on. Chris thinks the glove the suspect's wearing is the match to the one that he saw on the fence, which has now been removed. Dog's reaction was telling me he's gone over there. I had the units come in, so there's no footprints. So I almost negated it. Anyway. Don't y'all give the dog a treat or something? Got the tracking line so I could conduct a thorough search of dog under control. Very satisfying to get the driver, because at one point I thought we'd actually missed him. I was driving. That's what I've locked up for, okay? <laughs> well, the suspicion is theft of the motor vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous driving, failed to stop. You got a license? No. No license, no insurance, okay? What's this one called? Ronnie. Ronnie. Oh, yeah, Alright. Is that a dog or a human? Why it don't sound like it's barking, that sounds like something different. Ronnie certainly earned his dog biscuits tonight. Yeah, Ronnie's a boy. When I first shouted up to say the dogs give me an indication that the fence this big, even I doubt myself that somebody could have got over. Cops have said, oh, there's no footprints, but it just goes to show. He knows. I've just got to trust him. Back to where it all began. Hey. Any cop on the ground will tell you, don't want a dog to come to the job, whether it be public order, whether it be for a search or a track, because they know how valuable they are. Done it for me again. Love you, big boy. Following an investigation into the man Chris and Ronnie caught, Ronnie Cleveland was. police were unable to prove that he was in fact the driver. So no further action was taken. Yeah, but he had on gloves. As simple as that. Ain't no, ain't no fingerprints left behind. He said, I wasn't driving that. I was just out here chilling in a container shipment yard for no reason. I'm homeless. No further action was taken against the two men believed to be the passengers. <laughs> It's the start of the rush hour, 
and interceptors Carl Wood and Paul Jackson are blue lighting it to rendezvous with their colleagues. They're hoping to stop a car believed to be transporting drugs. We're just getting a bit of short notice. There's a car coming up into our area, having been down the Merseyside to collect a large quantity of drugs, we're told. Liverpool, okay. Uh, Merseyside, that means Liverpool. But we understand it's northbound on the motorway and we're looking to get our traffic cars plotted up nearby. So if we get the eyeball on it going past, we can do a preemptive box. We'll be surround the vehicle whilst in motion and force it to stop and not give it any chance to get away or discard any drugs. Veteran interceptor Jacko's been involved in his fair share of boxing in cars, otherwise known as T-Packs, and he knows exactly what to expect. We need to hide as best we can, see if we see it go by, staying together in a pod with all three cars virtually bumper to bumper, so if the subject vehicle checks his mirror, he's not seen he's been followed by three X5s, and we're trying to use the element of surprise. <clears throat> While Jacko's an old hand at T-Packs, the opposite is true of his partner and driver, Carl, who's only recently passed his T-Pack course. Tonight's his first time in the box seat, and he's got a good mentor beside him. Stop here, stop here. Think we got time for rookies, do we? Yeah. <laughs> Carl and Jacko plot up by a junction with the A1, along with the two other marked X5s who will be carrying out the T-Pack. They're waiting for the suspect motor, which is being tailed by an interceptor in an unmarked car. Tango 316 Fox, right, he's committed beyond 59, traveling in the near side lanes. It's time to move out. Bumper to bumper, lads. Yes, yes, Fox, we're safe. Bro, the police be too ready, man. They be really digging their job to the fullest extent. And hey, that's their job. I get it. But look how look how ready bro is. He chilling over there. He bro is adrenaline pumping. Just doing the most. Yeah, well, no. Okay. Just two vehicles to cover which are white transit vans. So the vehicle now moves to the offside lane, speed seven five. The cops don't want to be spotted before they're ready to strike, so they drive in tight formation to hide from the suspect vehicle. But they seem to be doing it too well, as they're not being noticed by the rush hour commuters making their way home on this busy main road. Move over, man, you idiot! Jacko's words have the desired effect, and the trio of cop cars close in. Well, you know, it's hard to tell with no lights. You don't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I get it. Y'all doing a little covert operation, but like, how would how would they know? Yeah, we've got it on there to the By law, if you see a cop car behind you without any lights or anything, you don't gotta move. It's best that you don't because they gonna think you suspicious or something. They're now fast approaching the Gulf, which is believed to be carrying drugs. Carl needs to get even tighter so the suspect doesn't realize he has a posse of cop cars on his tail. Have we got lane three there? A T pack requires three police vehicles one to get in front of the target car. One to go alongside and one to block it in from behind. Yeah, this is looking. So they need a bit of wiggle room. And now the A1 has opened up to three lanes, the team are in a perfect spot. It's time to tee pack. Move out, move out, move out. Move out, move out, move out. Carl pulls alongside the golf and stays tight to it, forcing it to the hard shoulder. Slow it down, bring him across, slow it down. Bring it across, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah. Across. Keep it tight. The other two cars have blocked front and rear. It's been a textbook T-pack. Jacko has the driver cuffed in seconds. Bro, don't know what's going on. These T-packs is like mad aggressive. When, especially, I know there's 
bunch of instances where they've teapacked the wrong person. You know what I'm saying? And they looking like, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> like, this is aggressive. But one of the rear seat passengers is less compliant. Open the door now! Open that door! The cops managed to open the other door and pull him out. They've got three men arrested. Pull them over. Yeah. Right, you've been detained at the present time. You're going to finish your nav? Yes or no? Uh, simple uh, answer. Uh, are, you, are, are you simple? Uh, what is it? Are you simple? Can you Right. What? <laughs> They're expecting the car to have drugs in it. Come on, lad. Come on, lad. Come on, lad. My bad. And Jacko spotted I'm something. working on it. There is a small bag of cannabis in the car, so whose is that? Hey. That's yours. Hey. Carl's keen to look in a plastic bag on the back seat, if he can get it open. Do you know what won't do not? No. You're all of a fluster, aren't you? I am. Carl needs to calm down, and the bag's right. full of tranquilizers. Mm, oh, two dozen bottles of diazepam, 100 tablets in each. It's on a prescription, it's controlled, you can just go and get it from a chemist. That's obviously yeah, a good little find. There's a couple of other quite large plastic bags as well in the back, which I'm quite keen to have a, have a look into. Are we going to move out, move out, move out? Well, let's. The car will be given a full search back at the Nick, along with the three suspects. Time for the interceptors to hit the road. One's got some cocaine on him. There's two small bags of cannabis. And there's a carrier bag with about 200 and odd diazepam tablets in, which is a controlled drug. So it's a good result. Question is, are they going to be able to pin it on a specific person? Or on their mind, they're going to give it to all of them, right? Look at Fido. <laughs> there's a lot of fireworks in the car. To not be on the realms of possibility that they could conceal drugs in there and the, the smell of the gunpowder would disguise it, but we'll have a look. And if they haven't got any drugs in, we'll just let them off. You're giving them too much credit now, buddy. In custody, the driver of the car failed a drug swipe and then failed to provide a specimen of blood. He was convicted and fined £492, including costs, and banned from driving for a year. He and the two passengers were also arrested for possession of Class C drugs and are still under investigation. We've stopped a car in rush hour on the A1 in darkness without metal on. editor on the platform. Metal without injury. I call that freestyle editing. And we've got three locked up before they realise what it and probably is. you put £6,000 worth of diazepam there. Them drugs are off the streets and we've got a drug drop. Oh my God. <laughs> I was moving too slow. I was I was admiring my work with the, with the beard swipe and it came up again driver off the roads as well so we've had about 15 minutes to react to that it's a really really good job i think everybody can be proud of themselves and no one more so than carl who's made his t-pack debut with a plot a bit daunting at first it's dark half past five at night roads are absolutely jam-packed full of commuters a little bit of trepidation all right carl who admires their work like bro chill you did one little T-Pack maneuver, bro. It's not like you out here editing videos, freestyling. What a chill. Anything that works out well, you're happy with, and um, quite, uh, quite pleased. Play you nailed really. it. To, to get it under me belt, and first one, off we go. Still to come. Alright, here we go. Interceptor Liam Sewell is on the graveyard shift when a call comes in from a traffic car in Billingham, five miles north of Middlesbrough. We got docked, off to the offside. Another unit is in pursuit of a blue sedan. Another unit is in pursuit of a blue Citroen, which has failed to stop. Left, 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 Thames Avenue. It's gone right, right, right into King's Arm Car Park. The Citroen leaves the road and darts into a car park. What's that? They come back out on the other side. Is that a bar? Negative, off road, off road to the left. On foot, two on foot. And the two men in the car leg it into a field. Liam and his tracker dog Titan are still a way off. The dog name is Titan? Oh man, y'all in for it. <laughs> no, 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 it's over. Off. 
But fellow dog handler Justin Moffat and his dog Elsa are on <coughs> scene <coughs> and on the tail oh, of Elsa. the runners. Elsa, come on, come along. Towards the passage. I think he's got one. I've got one in the garden, but I think there's another one going to ground. Justin's got there quite quickly with Elsa. He's deployed. He's got one detained in a garden and there's one still outstanding in the woods. We'd have never found him without the dog. Definitely not that they got away. Liam arrives to find one of the suspects in cuffs. We've got one detained. We believe the <laughs> one's in one of the gardens <laughs> down here. <laughs> Why does suspect look like he chew wood? Suspects <laughs> in cuffs. Bro look like he bite. And then he got the nerves to have a hickey. Who? Who? We've got one detail. We believe the one's in one of the gardens down here. Another officer is at the back of the houses and he's heard, Titan. heard noises in one of the gardens. Now, mate, I'm literally out the front of them uh, gardens that you're at the rear of. Um, there you, Kev. If you get any um, gardens, mate, if you count along, I'll come in there from the front. Three or four or fifth along, mate. From the cut. Yeah, Roger. I'll see if I can get it. Liam spies his colleague's torch behind the house and heads into the back garden. Ali, I'm just at the front of the garden that you're shining your torch into now. Is this where you heard the noise? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And Titan is straight onto someone lying down in a flower bed. I think I'm catching a cold, man. Right, mate, police to your dog. Stand up now and show yourself. Stand up. Yeah, we've got one male in this garden. Stand back. Take a step back, mate. Step forward. Stand still. Put your arms around your back. Down. Shall we come round, Liam? You all right? Yeah, we can pop round. The late night gardener is playing dumb. What's the f***? Yeah, that dog want a piece of bro. What? You're locked up, mate. Suspicion of fail to stop in that vehicle, all right? What vehicle? The one that's parked out there. Right, nobody. right, don't walk around, mate. Sorry, I'm right. me. Yeah, no worries, I'm not going to because the dog's a bit hype at the moment. You're just waiting for him to settle down, all right? I'm going to step forward and cuff you. OK? <coughs> Information's never <coughs> come through, which sheds light on why the two men legged it from the car. So a few reports coming in from two lads in a dark vehicle breaking it. the vans have been on a bit of a crime spree around Billingham area. So, brilliant result, two lads in custody for burglary breaks the garages and fail to stop. While his colleague deals with he the suspect burglar, the vans, that ain't burglar, Liam decides to see if he's dumped anything in the garden. There's a mobile phone there, so we're going to seize that. I hope this is a stolen phone from one of the addresses or vehicles that's being broken into. Oh. It'll just link him to the offence. If it's his iPhone, he's not going to leave it there, is he, in the middle of the night? Yeah, I've been back in search where I found him, and there's an iPhone on the floor that he's discarded. Liam returns to find Justin with the man he caught, who's now getting gobby. Pure job works. Don't swear, don't you? Oh, and I swear at you, like your dad. You can loosen these cuffs or what? No. No. Because you're effing and jeffing. Yeah, could you? Because the cuffs are tight. Well, they're tight for a reason. Well, tight. Stand you just yeah. behave yourself and stand still. Otherwise, <laughs> we'll put you on the floor so you can't <laughs> kick off again. <laughs> oh, put me on the floor. It's got yes, a bit of a mucky mouth. So just behave yourself. Well, There's no wrong with us. You know what's crazy? These police right here don't even take bro serious. They looking like, man, come on, man. Slow down before I suplex you. You can act like an adult. Oh, okay. I am acting like an adult, but you want not those really. enough. You're yeah. not off no one. Right, well, that's why you're running through people's gardens. When you've abandoned the car, it's still full of stolen property. No one. I'm going to smile at you when I go it all back. I don't think you will, son. No. Hey. Stop, stop swearing. No, the van's not there for your pleasure. The van's coming to take you away. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I want to get in. Cold. That's what we'll do with an hour time. You shouldn't go out thieving in the middle of the night, then, should you? Thieving? You could have been tucked up with a nice warm bed. Oh, bugging. Yeah. Do you need the heat and cranking up pedal at custody? Oh, yeah. Further. You can't be you can't be a criminal and shivering. You know what I'm saying? Criminals are always warm. This chilly chap gets his wish. He and his suspected partner in crime are soon in the back of a warm van. Hey, you oh, you? Oh, mind you. Oh, you. Pedal. Good. Sit down. And while they thaw out, Liam has a look through the car they did. How do they fit a whole bike in there? What kind of car is this? Someone's mountain bike in there, there's a guitar. 
there's someone's work tools. That's someone who's going to get up for work tomorrow morning and not have any kit to do his job. It's just a nice result to get these two lads locked up. They're just an absolute Excuse pain me. in the backside, you know, scum of the earth, going around breaking people's houses. And if you just have a look on the seat here, we've got mm. the big massive machete. Laid an article. You know, these are the type of people that we're dealing with, you know. And then you've got them locked up complaining that they're cold because it's a bit frosty. Well, get no sympathy from me. The lad found by Justin later pleaded guilty to three counts of theft and was sentenced to 24 weeks in prison. His colleague, who Liam found lying down in the garden, pleaded guilty to three <coughs> counts of theft and was sentenced to 40 hours community service and ordered to pay a total of £135. Somebody record must have been more extensive. Good bit of team, but really, you know, we've got tra traffic, I've spotted a vehicle with no lights on, got an ARV unit we've got behind it, the vehicle's failed to stop. We've had two lads bail out into the bushes. On foot, two on foot. Justin's been on top of it straight away. Ailsa's caught one in one garden and she's carried on searching the woodland and I've come around the front and searched the next gardens along and caught one in the back. So, good result for Titan and Ailsa tonight. He had a bit of barky-barky at him. And um, we've got two burglars in custody. Can't ask for more, really. Good job, Elsa the dog. That's all about, that's the only person I'm congratulating in any of this. Salute. See you, leave a like, comment, I'm coming.